we have a table here saying, why aren't you vegan? And it's a debate table. Uh, you said that you agree with veganism, yes, actually. But then you said you don't agree with animals having rights. Yeah. Okay, so let's unpack that because uh, for me, it's entailed by veganism that animals have rights. It's an animal rights movement. Well, I guess there's two ways you can see veganism. You can see veganism more kind of like as a diet, which is, you know, abstention from animal products. But you can also conceive of it as, I guess, more broadly as a kind of philosophy about the re reduction of harm towards animals. But the um, neither of those two things I mean, necessarily entails the existence of the of animal rights as these kinds of moral entities. Um, of, yeah, that's what I'd say. Okay, um, I would disagree that veganism is about the reduction of harm. I, don't, I, would, I wouldn't even know what that meant. Um, the original definition of veganism was the doctrine the doctrine that man should live without exploiting animals. Essentially, yes. Now, the, the word exploitation has some weird implications because, like, there's many things you can consider it exploitation. But I would say uh, that, that humans should live without violating the negative rights of sentient animals. So your veganism isn't from a kind of utilitarian perspective, but rather from a kind of idea of there is, animals have certain rights that humans must not violate. Yes, that, okay. yeah, negative All rights. Right. So yeah, not yes. positive, you know, the obviously I don't want to vote and drive cars and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would say, say that there, mm. human rights are based on inherent value. Yeah. We share sentience in common, and that's why we yes. don't want to, uh, to be interfered with because yep. it matters to us. What happens to us matters to us. I would say animals share that property with us, therefore they, that we should extend basic fundamental rights to okay. them as well. And why does sentience entail certain rights being given to uh, bearers of sentience? Because that's the only reason that they're being um, experienced matter. I mean, because they're having experience, what happens to them matters to them, therefore it would be a direct contradiction of um, us expecting those yes. rights respected to not extend those to other beings who, although they're a different species, yeah. share that property with us. Why would, why would a non-sentient being need rights that don't exist in, mm. the, in the conscious space? But you, you said something like animals have rights because they have sentience, that sentience means they matter. Yeah, morally, yeah. Yes, okay. Morally. But where, where does that matter? Or well, why, why is it that sentience has an inherent kind of moral value that say non-sentience forms of existence don't. And also we do like implicitly accept in like conventional morality that non-sentient things can have a kind of moral status. Like example, um, a bit of an extreme example, like necrophilia, we accept that you can't have sex with corpses, even Why? though, even though corpses not, sorry? Why does that matter? Why does that matter? Well, it's just, well, I, I would just say it's just disgusting. I don't like it. Yeah, but yeah. exactly, because you're a sentient being and it matters to you. Only sentient beings can be disgusted that someone's committing an act of necrophilia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And without sentience, it wouldn't matter. Do you see yeah, how they, suffering can yes. only be entailed by sentience? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that someone does something to an object that's not sentient or a body that yes. was sentient, uh, that offends people who are sentient. You know, yeah. it's still sentient. That, that is sentience. That's a metric there for that morality. But now you're saying, okay, so the reason why we discuss is because we have sentience. Mm. That, dis that disgust does not necessarily entail just because, you know, I feel, I feel, I do genuinely feel disgusted at factory farming. And I think you know, eating meat is pretty gross. And so that's why I would support veganism. But at the same time, I don't necessarily think that justifying it in terms of rights, because this, this really rights is just a kind of, it seems to me, a very spooky kind of metaphysical concept. I think it's better to base it in a, sorry? Wait a second. Why is it metaphysical and spooky? And any time sort of normative, so like ought statement, is not something that exists in, you can't justify on the basis. It's not something that materially exists. So, okay, sorry. So, but the rights are very important to function in society. You have human yeah. rights. So you, yeah, do, yeah do, I agree. Do, yeah. do you believe that we shouldn't have human rights? No, no, no. I think we should have like they're obviously a society. We need to have some kind of like contracts just so that sounds like a normative. Sorry, we should have rights, human rights. I'm saying I, well, the reason why I, I want to have human rights is because not having human rights leads to a society that I don't think is that I, I find intuitively just kind of gross. Like I, 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 I don't live in China where I'm having like cameras watching me all the time. And well, I'm like, talking about negative yeah. rights being violated. Yes. I'm talking about you being enslaved and killed for a burger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So if you didn't have human rights, I mean, I could basically do that to you. Yeah. If yes. I had a big enough gun and you didn't have one. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so your rights are important, even though they're some. And they don't exist in metaphysical. They're not. They're not. You can't grab a right. <laughs> yes. Can't, can't tangibly hold a right. But these right. But these rights are a kind of social. Uh, I'm talking about rights as a kind of social relation. That you know, uh, the, the government does give me the rights not to be slaughtered and turned into a Why do you burger. deserve rights? There's not like an objective reason why I deserve rights, but I just I just want to have them. Why? Why do you want to have them? Why do I want to have them? Because I'm just have like these kind of desires that have instilled, been instilled in me by evolution. Your know, evolution sort of tends towards you know survival and reproduction, and obviously 
being turned into a burger is not very can, it, it just in, because of my the way I've been programmed by evolution just, just kind of don't like it you wouldn't want something bad to happen to you for a burger for me yeah okay so now if we if we replace the animals in animal agriculture with human beings yes would you... Would you think that's morally abhorrent? I think it's morally hor abhorrent. Like I said, that we use animals in the first oh, place. Oh, you do. So, so, yeah. so, so, but why? So, so you believe it's morally abhorrent? We should stop animal agriculture. Stop farming animals for for burgers. I, I think if like, if you're like a, like I say, a Maasai farmer in Kenya, and you know you're 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 you've, you're herding cows in like a natural way. It's what you've, you've done for millennia. I don't, I don't really see much, that much of an issue with that intuitively. You know. Uh, obviously, I think the way that we do it in the Western world with factory farming and um, the kind of like modern industrialized agriculture okay. is pretty gross. I'm not going to, but obviously, I'm not. I, I'm not going to apply it to like traditional forms of animal agriculture. But yeah, well, I let's agree. talk about traditional then, because okay, you're cool, you're yeah. opposed to factory farming. Yeah, I am. Yeah. So great, you're opposed to 98 percent of farming. Yeah, I am. Yes. Oh, is your, uh, yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Try, I do try to as much as I can to avoid meat, although I'm not always successful. But yeah, okay. Uh, that's, okay. If okay. I'm being completely honest, yeah. I mean, there are other industries like eggs and dairy and stuff like the. Uh, oh yeah, I do. I do. I don't drink milk and stuff. Okay. Too, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about the the idyllic yes. farm. And I, I would, can, you know, when people say idyllic farm in this country, I mean, yes. it's a lot to do with marketing. So um, whether or not they exist like that, I mean, it's a different yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I've, yes. We can talk about your hypothetical farm if you like. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what, what, what is the idyllic farm that you wouldn't oppose? Well, I don't oppose, let's say, um, trad traditionalist kind of communities. Um, I mean, these places mostly exist in like the third world. They use traditional means of agriculture, so, you know, they rear, they rear cattle and they slaughter them for food. And they, they generally eat the entire ha the, the entire cow. They don't like, I so mean... So tail to, nose to tail kind nose, of eating? Nose to tail kind of eating. Like, to me, that I can't really... Like, obviously, the, I, I, I think I, if I had to kill a cow, I'd be a bit sad. Even if I was, even if the cow had been raised in like a uh, pre-industrial kind of state. But at the same time though, I don't, I don't really see a reason to mor morally condemn these people because that fundamentally, like if you're a, if you're like a Maasai farmer in, I think they're from, they're from Kenya, you can't like, you can't just why go. Why does it matter where they're from basically? Why, why does it matter if they're Maasai why from Kenya? Why does it what? matter? Because you can't just like go and go to Tesco's and get like, and get uh, milk uh, and like beans. I get what you mean. Yeah, you get, you know what I mean? Like it's, I, I'm not gonna like morally blanketly condemn all every every single instance of um, animal agriculture but i will i do always i think industri industri modern industrialized animal agriculture is deeply gross and we should stop it yeah yeah okay so we're yeah. back to factory farming but like i'm yeah. just saying at, at what point would you support animal agriculture if they were employing practices that the messiah employ to to their yeah. cows well i mean it's not really sustainable in like a in modern in the modern britain like you can't, okay. you can't yeah. so, so I, don't, I don't support like I, mean, I don't care I what's, about what's sustainable, yeah. but it's sustainable yeah. for me to kill human beings. I mean, yeah, and, true. And, you know, it's better for the environment. I mean, I'm concerned with human rights in that case. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, we're having an animal rights discussion here because you oppose animal, the yes, idea yeah. of animal rights. So yeah. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out here, <laughs> basically, I'm trying to figure out this idyllic scenario. And yes. I believe that in that idyllic scenario, the animals are still having their rights violated. Okay. So and I want to know why you believe that's justified. Like, so the Messiah decapitating cows. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think that would still happen if, say, we could stop it by, yes. imp say, importing food over there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or Why not? With infrastructure, yeah. you think we ought to stop that practice? I don't want to like advocate any particular policy that because I, I I didn't actually know how we would if we did import food. Like I would, ideally, yeah, we wouldn't be killing anyone anything for food. Mainly so. in principle. I'm in, not in, in principle. In, yeah. I mean, you might not. I'm not asking you to build a framework yeah, 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 in yeah. practicality yeah, to yeah. how to, how to solve like, this issue. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out because veganism is a principle. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that, that principle, uh, we should it basically it logically follows our practices that are in, in accordance with that yes. principle. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out in principle, why don't you believe animals deserve rights, fundamental rights, similar to human beings? Firstly, the, the way that we, us humans have rights is through a kind of like implicit contracts between like us and the state. And the, we, we say to the state, um, I'm going to like not kill you and turn you into a burger. You're not going to kill me and not going to turn me into a burger. It's a reciprocal contract, you mean? It's a kind of reciprocal contract. We can't really have, we can't really have contracts with animals in that kind of way. But at the same time, though, just because we can't have those kinds of contracts doesn't mean that we should, like, I think it's still, I think it's right to torture animals in factory farms on that basis. But the reason why I don't believe in animal rights is because it's just a very spooky kind of concept, I think, oh. uh, philosophically, the idea that you know, the pigeon over there has some kind of rights that are like objectively bad to violate. I think that there is subjectively bad. So you, so you don't believe that these rights are objective? 
No, I don't think they're okay. objective. I don't think they exist in objective reality. I mean, okay. I don't think morality is objective either. Okay. I mean, not a, All right, we're on the same page. Yeah. It's yeah. A, morality is clearly subjective. I mean, yes. you need a subject to perceive it and to create it and to yeah, yeah. uphold these things. And of course, yes. I'm, a, I'm, I'm saying that our subjective morality is contradicting itself. Yes. Uh, so it's not consistent. That moral framework is not consistent. And I'm saying mm. if, human deser if humans deserve rights because we share inherent value, it yes. doesn't matter if a human being can reciprocate a social contract or not. Because there are human beings who cannot. Children, yeah. people who are, uh, who are born with some type of disability cannot yes. reciprocate a so social contract. We still give them human rights. You cannot violate their human rights. You go to prison, yes. protected. It's based off an inherent, inherent value. It doesn't matter if you're a different race, if you're a different... Uh, yes. What, mm -hmm. Where you're from, what, what social economic status you're at, we have human rights for universal, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. People violate them, countries violate them, true, but yep. they're there. They seem to be well established as well. Well, so, well, I mean, okay, but you know, in the UK, we can. In, talk in, 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 in like. Yeah. They're, 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 they're not, they're not but, you, but you just said in different, in different countries they get violated, so it doesn't really show that they're universal. Well, uh, they're supposed, there was a human rights, uh, what is it, 1950s? There was a new universal declaration on human rights. Yes, there was. And yeah. it was a promise to, uh, it was only like three countries that didn't sign it or something like that. I yes. Remember. I think Russia was one. It was a SSSR back then or USSR yes. back then. But most countries yes. followed from this principle that human beings have inherent value. Therefore, we ought to strive to uh, respect human rights. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... What I'm saying is it's based on inherent value. And what is that based on? Why would humans matter if we weren't conscious? Obviously, a brain yes. dead human doesn't matter unless they're... Fa the only thing, reason a brain dead human matters is because of their family and things like this. Yes. People switch, to, um, switch off uh, people that are on life support all the time yes. because they realize they're never coming back. They're not there anymore. Yeah. Animals share this property with us, right? Yes. So can you please, for me, I want to I ask you, I'm going to write down these traits too. So basically, I want you to justify why human beings should have these rights and animals yeah. should not. And is there some type of trait or characteristic that yeah. separates us from animals and what that is? Well, so why, why should human, humans have rights but animals should not? Yeah, these, these fundamental yeah. rights I'm talking about, yeah. Well, I think that What's the humans, it's not, it's not necessarily, I wouldn't, my argument isn't necessarily that humans should have rights, so they do have rights via the social contract. And that, in the sense that I don't think we should kill animals, for, we, should have this, we should have the right not to be killed for food, so that humans, I don't think there's a morally relevant characteristic that um, necessarily excludes animals from having that right. So in that sense, I think I'm in agreement with you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you agree with me then? Sorry. You do agree with animal rights then? Yes, but just not as these like object this objective thing. I think we'll do. I think, okay, yeah. so maybe yes. it was maybe yes. we we're missing on the idea of what what yes. rights we we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because. <laughs> Because uh, I thought that was easy. Okay, no. <laughs> no, no. You didn't even have to go through them. Because no, no. basically, yeah. I was looking for a morally re relevant difference as to why humans should have these basic fundamental rights, not no. to be interfered with and enslaved and killed and tortured. Yeah. Um, and why animals uh, should not. And yes. What that separating factor was, and you you basically said I think animals should have those rights as well. We we, we should have to give them rights in the sense that we should like treat them with respect and, and like not torture them in factory farms. Well, not torture not, them. Yeah. I, I'm just saying or treat them, treat yeah. them as property. Not respect yeah, their, their, yeah, so like I mean, basically animals are considered property even if they're not tortured. And yes. they're also, I can do, if I'm a farmer, I can do what I want yeah. to these sheep. As so, as, I mean, would you be against dog ownership as well then on that basis? No, think? no. Um, okay. Well, ownership, yes, I think we should change ownership to okay. not like, not the dogs being our prop, considered our yes. property. Mm -hmm. I think we should be considered guardians like we are with children. Yeah, I would agree with that, yes. Yeah. So like, you, yeah. obviously animals, you can't just let dogs run around and yeah. like give them all freedom because that yes. wouldn't be in the animal's best interest. Yes. But right now, if I have a dog, I can take them to go get put down or drop them, drop them off at the shelter and whatever. They're, they're, yeah, yeah. Their interests are not... Dogs and cats are difficult because their interests are, are actually um, mm. respected more than farmed animals. They have more sort of legal yeah. protection than farmed animals, but they're still considered property. Yes. You know? And I think I should change to guardianship and have their interests actually. Yeah. yeah. My overall point was that rights aren't these like objective things. And I think the one I most agree with is, I think, is virtue ethics. I'm, uh, I kind of think that we should try and cultivate character traits within ourselves that are um, that inher inherently kind of have normative concepts built into them. So, example, like cur cur being courageous or being kind or being charitable. These are all kind of um concepts that have no they've got normative concepts kind of built into them they're, they're valid, already of values of concepts and we should try and cultivate those dispositions i think we should 
And I think by, you know, treating animals with respect, not kill, not unnecessarily killing them is kind of a way of cultivating that. So I do, I, that is, but I'm not 100% in any ethical camp. But I do think that's the one I have the most sympathies for. Okay, uh, I get yeah. you, I get you. Yeah. Like, I'm more in the camp of uh, some uh, deontology, but with the, uh, yes. a, at a certain threshold, I would uh, say that that, that threshold yeah. of utility overrid the rights of that individual. Yeah. So I'm 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 not saying that like just yeah. one person. If you yeah. did like so, because you can create some pretty yeah. hilarious um, hypotheticals yeah. that make deontology look yes. crazy. You can create really easy hypotheticals that make uh, yeah. negative utilitarian look insane too. Like yeah. five rapers getting pleasure from raping one individual yes, with yeah. the utility gain. So yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah I, I'm a more of a rights person, but there's a threshold of which I go, yeah. well, that's just crazy. You're gonna let go. So 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 you so you'd be willing to let's say kill someone if it meant that a million people didn't get mutilated i wouldn't say a million um because then you yeah. can sort of justify human testing for medication and things like okay that. Yeah. i would probably say it, it would have to scale up into billions before i would consider right, violating billion, okay. the rights of uh all right you okay. know, like a billion yeah. maybe or hundreds of millions. i don't so know where that line yeah. is okay like uh but yeah. i know there's a definitely a line <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Where... Well, i mean this, this is why i like virtual ethics because you don't really have to have like structures just like moral rule you have to like always apply you, you do have a you just have a kind of disposition that you try to follow and you try to balance the various kind of like practical considerations within yeah. a given ethical situation my ethics is very much inspired by like aristotle because aristotle does say um it, it is in a way kind of on, on a, in a certain sense egoist aristotle's virtue what's ethics. an egoist um i guess it's the the, the 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 real highest value is yourself and your your own kind of well, well-being, however you define that, I do think that is um, kind of. I mean, I don't, don't want to like get into like. But I'm basically saying that we should we should be virtuous because virtue virtue does being virtuous does benefit humans, and but also uh, that's that's kind of like the primary reason because that's the only real thing we have access to that can kind of get, give us. Do you think that would give right a good framework wrong? for society? Sorry. What do you think gives a better framework for us in society? Virtue um, ethics or rights? Or virtue ethics, I think, because if we kind of if we cultivate if we cultivate virtues, then we don't have a reason to have to have these rights. Um, in, in the sense of you know we don't have to like no no no, no one would no one would like unnecessarily kill animals if everyone was virtuous Could oh virtuous, yeah if yes. you can imp yeah yeah but oh, yes yeah oh yeah, yeah. But you that's uh like yeah t that's talking about you're talking about brainwashing people into or well, not brainwashing them but well, you're talking no. about changing the consciousness and preferences of people into virtuous humans yeah but right well, i'm not right i want like i want like clockwork orange people into being virtuous so no yeah of yeah, course so yeah. that, basically essentially that's what you'd have to do you'd have to cultivate virtue within people and hope that they subjectively act in that way but rights um, you can protect well, people with yeah. with the rights in law, so that it doesn't matter what your preferences are, whether yes. you're virtuous or not. You're protected from me from enslaving you. Yes. Let's mm -hmm. just say one day I'm virtuous. One day I want to enslave you for a burger. Okay. Yeah. You have rights protecting you when no yeah. matter what. Someone... Well, yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah. Hopefully, we'd have like virtuous people in charge who would like obviously try to enforce a certain, a certain minimal kind of. But wouldn't you have yeah. to violate some type of thing of some type of protection a human has for them to even start coming after you with? Sorry? Wouldn't you have to violate a human in some way? Like you could, yeah. mm -hmm. like I think rights are a good framework for that. If they violate a human's rights, then we should step in. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's why I think rights are good too, legal legal rights. And I think like if we if we extend those to animals, yes, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter if you want to eat them or not. If you if you have some ethic that says, oh, as long as they're having living net positive yeah. lives, I can kill them on some Maasai farm. You know, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. They have rights, and you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get someone step in. Obviously, in every society is going to be vicious people, and I do think. Ideally, we would have virtuous people in charge who will be able to, to um, some, some way sort of stop those vicious people. Like, let's say, um, like obviously, if someone wants to go, if, if there is a mass murder on the loose, I would want the state to step in and stop them. Yeah. And I do think, on that basis, yes, maybe, obviously, there should be some kind of legal sort of prohibition on killing people and, 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 and on like, and killing animals. What about this? Pain killing or yes. violating the negative rights of sentient beings <laughs> yes because that's what i'm that's all i'm talking like yeah mm -hmm. like if you believe you obviously don't believe in i mean you have a problem with the rights so let's just say yes because uh, we, we have this we share this property we, we, yes. we share sentience yeah. sentient beings is what i'm concerned with not necessarily animals or people it's yeah. that we're sentient that's what that's the, the thing i'm tracking yes mm -hmm. you know so um if we had uh some law in place that meant we shouldn't we can't violate these sentient beings yes you know that would protect us all i mean i wouldn't care if it was virtue or what you called it if you called it not called it a right you called it a virtue not to do that 
but it was encoded into law. That, yes. would, that would fulfill the same function as a right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, as long as uh, these sentient beings are protected from this type of, yeah. you know, slavery or whatever, then I would be on board with that. I mean, you've changed the word right to virtue or whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, I do I do think we, we ultimately... Applied virtue? I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 do, I do think we ultimately don't disagree. Like, I do think that, that obviously there should be, in society, should enforce certain standards against humans, whether you put them in terms of, like, subjective rights or, or like, objective rights. It doesn't really matter. But I think... But my, 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 yeah, I, I think, I think we basically just do, do we do agree. We agree semantics yeah. differences, maybe a little yeah. bit ethical, but I'm just yes. saying this should yeah. be laws protecting both animals and humans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I agree there should be legislation to protect laws and animals. In that sense, yeah, I agree with animal rights in the sense, I, I don't think, I think animals should have the right not to be tortured in factory farms. And, oh. um, sorry. Because I'm not always just concerned with torture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually, if, uh, I wouldn't want yes. you to be tortured, I wouldn't want you to be. I mean, I, th I think like, obviously. <laughs> other things to happen that yeah, don't like, involve yeah, like, torture. Like, obviously, like my, my ideal, like utopia, there would be a complete a complete injunction against like un unjustified killing of animals i mean obviously there's gonna be some people in society like let's say if you, ha if you have like a soy and a nut allergy then you're kind of you can't really become a vegan you have to you are gonna have to rely on animal products unfortunately I would need to, that's, that's gonna that be sounds like, like an empirical claim sorry? That sounds like an empir empirical claim like that. But there, if, you, but are... if you have an allergy, then you can't become vegan. I mean, there, there might, well, in the future, we might invent some way of being able to feed, like, feed people who... Is it okay to feed people to those people who have a nut allergy? I mean, no, but feeding a person is, to me, a lot more intuitively horrible than like feeding, let's say, a pigeon. But uh, um... So, can you name the trait? Sorry? Uh, can you name the trait um, between uh, that separates... Uh, so, so I have more affinity for humans than I do for pigeons. Okay. So, yeah. intuitively, so it's not uh, yeah. uh, some type of... Uh... Well, yeah, I mean, like, for fundamentally, yeah. there is... Uh, what I'm trying to say, does it justify... In, in, in evolutionary psychology, there is kin selection. Like, you're going to prefer, pe like, things that are more... Gene genetically, okay, yeah. of course, similar to them, it's yeah. intuitive. Like, it's not like a. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's not like it, I, I've got. I don't obviously. I don't want. I wouldn't want the pigeon ideally to have to be killed in the first place. But if there's, but like, it, are you saying we should um, violate these animals' rights or have a loophole for a soy and nut allergy where we can cut animals' heads off for this person? If there was someone who literally just couldn't eat, who could could not eat vegan products, I would be willing to sacrifice some pigeons for them. Who do you choose to kill to help those people? I was, I was going to say, ideally, we would find a way such that they could follow a have have a healthy diet and also not unnecessarily kill animals um yeah, yeah so we would so yeah, so yeah. create some um we would create a way to feed them that wouldn't involve violating human rights yeah yeah yeah. Oh, oh, but, but, yeah but my my point the reason why i said um because i mean how, how do we get onto this point um you said i i said i don't want to torture animals and you said you, i think you said you, you, uh, you said, said, I said that should be legal we should ban fashion farming i wouldn't just basically. use the word torture yeah. because well, there are ways you can raise animals for food that don't involve torture. I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. Like, I wouldn't describe, like, pre-industrial, like, farming processes in, like, Africa as being kind of, as being torture, even though, yeah, they do involve an animal dying, which obviously makes me sad, but yeah. Murdered, not dying. Sorry? I mean, animals die, but they're murdered against their so, preference to live, which is... Well, I mean, murder is, what is murder is unjustified killing, and I do think... Like I said, it's, it's not that hard for these people. These it is hard for these people to just go to the shops and buy a kind of a kind of chickpeas. They are kind of. I still think areas. it's a violation of animal rights. Whether you're in a situation yes. like if me and you are in a survival situation right now, yeah. and I've I cut your head off, I've still violated your rights. Yeah, you did. But it wouldn't be like if, if let's say you and I. Were did stuck you say on, it's justified that I did that? If you and I were stuck on a desert island, there was literally no other like there was literally no other nothing that we could eat. And we eventually had to resort to like fighting each other to the death, and, eat, and the loser gets eaten. No, no, not each other. Yeah. Uh, you were a victim. Yeah. I, you, I, you didn't want to kill me. I just decided to cut your head off and eat you. You, you were vulnerable against me. Sorry. I had a knife. You didn't. And I thought, okay. you know, what? he's vulnerable. I don't care. I'm well, gonna you, cut his head. Well, at that point, like we don't really. We're kind of in a very, very different yeah. kind of moral I'm just situation. Just asking if it's justified in your eyes as the victim. Is it? Is it? Well, it's just. It is. <laughs> Well, the, at that point, like the the only justification is just might makes right. And exactly, actually, and it doesn't, does it? Sorry, and it doesn't, does it? Well, in that situation, it does. Um, I wouldn't say so. I'd sorry? say I'd say one, one of us got to die first. Maybe we should just let each other <laughs> see who dies first. You know what I mean? Really? I prefer, yeah, like see who dies first. I think obviously ethics and morality they yeah. go out the window when civilization breaks down and there's a zombie apoca yeah, apocalypse. Yeah, apocalypse and yeah. things like this. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, I just think we 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 allow too much for people to murder animals. Actually, we allow a little too much, and we say, oh yeah, it's okay if they're in some situation. But I would say they ought still respect animal rights. So they ought still have the the um. The, what's, so, what's so, the so, so you think like people they still, still strive okay. to, to um... but obviously this in like in the far far north of let's say Alaska there's not actually they can't really get anything else to eat like well, what else are they going to eat and like fruit well, well in the future let's just say yeah. uh, you know we, we have animal rights and we're, mm. we're really trying to change the food system and then people yes. shouldn't live in, in, in places that have no 
way of getting their food other than murdering animals. You know, I think that we should uh, either get food to them yeah. or get the people out of there into somewhere where where can where they can uh, get access to food that isn't mm-hmm. murdering animals. Because all I would say to you is, um, would it be justified if you put humans in place of the animals mm-hmm. and um, human beings that are in a place where they can't get plant food yeah. are actually enslaving and killing other people? Yeah. And, uh, and I would ask you, would, what would we do in that situation? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, yes. If it was, if it was humans, I mean, I, I am still saying that, yeah, it's not ideal that they're having to, that they're having to kill seals and whales. Yeah, you see it's that more, there's a more of a yeah, they've you, got you, they're in a yeah. bit more different circumstance to the average person. So, are you a vegan? Yeah. Sorry, are you a I, vegan? I I agree with the principle that you, animals. I don't, I don't. I don't. Whether I follow a plant based diet, I do. I do genuinely. I have a thing around on average like one me- meal that involves meat a day. Okay. Um, I do. Generally, as if, if there is a vegan option, I will have it. That okay. is my. I, I it's something I want. It's something I need to improve on. But that is my. So you agree with the principle yes. of veganism? I agree. But yes. In practice, you don't follow it. So you, you... In, in practice, I don't follow a completely plant-based diet. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you morally justify not being vegan? Yes. I don't. I don't. I. I am. I am unjustified. <laughs> I accept I'm unjustified in like eating, in in, in eat when I when I do eat meat in eating meat. So yeah, why, do you do it? It. why do you do it? Why do you do it? Let's, let's analyze because, why we. Okay, okay, cool. Because it's easy. It's easy. It's yeah. convenient. It's, it's easy and it's convenient, and like everyone else does it. And I just, I can't. If, if I, let's say I lived in India, I'd obviously have. It'd be a lot easier to be a vegetarian in India. It'd be a lot easier for me, or to, or to be a vegan in India. Um, but in just in the current, uh, the, the the way things are, I, if if there is meat available i will sometimes give into temptation i'll eat it yeah so you accept it's unjustified but you put convenience yes uh convenience and you put uh easy oh easy is convenient uh you said it well it's basically just convenience argument isn't it i know no no, i mean it's also also to be honest taste like i i won't won't lie like a lot of there is a lot of vegan food that does not taste the best but yeah and uh what about habit yeah, it's just a habit as well. I mean, it's c- culture as well. I'm, I'm habit. Just... I know you said everyone else does it. Sorry. So social norm. Social norm. Well, I mean, that, that just makes that that is just, just like a subset of convenience, isn't it? So. In, well, I mean, social norms are what allow you to do this for convenience. Yeah. Because if there was like, if I had a like an under underground uh, dog, yeah, boiling basement where I'm torturing dogs and boiling them, yes, and you're coming, yeah. and someone found out that you were buying meat, keeping me in business, you were the only one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's not a social norm, so you would be chastised by people, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, obviously people apply dog, double standards to dogs. So then they, they apply different standards to dogs they do to cows. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, so now let's just say that the dog tastes really good. Yeah. So we've got mm-hmm. taste. Tastes good. Yes. Dog. It's still unjustified. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's a habit to eat dogs. It's a social norm to eat dogs. Yeah. Well, you'd probably be eating dogs though, wouldn't you? I probably wouldn't. I'd probably be a lot more like intuitively disgusted by that than I would be by a cow just because it's so normal. Even though it is, I do find it intuitively disgusting that cows are raised in factory farms and killed. And yeah, so I would, obviously, if, if you did go to the, the local Sainsbury's in Cambridge and replace all the meat with dog, then yeah, I'd be a lot more, I would probably be, it'd be a lot easier for me to go vegan because okay. I do have a lot of, just, just based on my own, like, like I said, proximity to dogs, I would obviously find that a lot more intu- like just viscerally objectionable than I do a cow, just because mm. a cow has just been like normal food my entire life. To you, e- even still- though I do accept that, yes, it is, is disgusting. I do. I would like to stop, but um, okay. it's just not. It's just difficult. So I'm yeah. trying to find. I'm just trying yeah. to find because now you got this line here. Like, yeah. okay, you mm. wouldn't. You wouldn't choose the dog. No, I wouldn't choose the dog. So, no. so what animals here? You got cows. Yeah, uh, cows, fish, chicken, whatever. Yeah. The normal. So, would you avoid pork? Um, I, uh, pork. I actually really like pork, as a, but that's like a taste thing. But, okay, um, it's a but, taste. But I, I, I do sometimes eat pork. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so you went. Okay. So we got yeah. cows. You can. You can probably have a lamb here and there. On this side mm-hmm. here, you've got basically all of these animals that are yeah. culturally normal to eat. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but you agree? Like, let's just put dogs yeah. here. We'll put um elephants here. Yeah. On this side, let's put uh monkeys. Yeah. On this side, um, what other animal would you find it morally repulsive to eat? I mean, it, uh, well, not morally repulsive. I mean, uh, an animal that is kind of eat, normal to eat, I don't eat is duck, just because it's. Oh, you don't eat it, ducks? It's, it's, it's quite yeah, it's quite easy to refuse to eat duck, and I just don't. Yeah. You don't want to eat duckies. I don't eat is ducks. Some type no. of something. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's just like I, I find like eating ducks just like intuitively gross than eating cows for some reason. It's just like it's, I, I don't know why. It's just something in my psychology. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. we got we got dog, elephants, monkeys, yeah. ducks, humans. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So you're in the shop. Yeah. On one side you've got cow, one side you've got human. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Let's yeah. go to humans. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, you understand that by buying these products, right? You are yes. you're essentially creating the demand for yeah, to be decapitated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm creating demand for factory farming. I, 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 I fully admit that. Yes. Not even factory farming. I'm just talking about. Uh, let's just say it's a free range cow. Okay. Cool. A lot of uh, cows yeah. in the UK are free range. They go indoors, uh, say, yeah. in the winter. But a lot of cows. Let's just say it's a free range cow. Yeah. They go to a slaughterhouse to to be bolt gunned in the head and decapitated. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you when you purchase this product, mm -hmm. you're putting that into demand. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and you're using um, these justifications: convenience, taste, habit. You said it's unjustified, but you still yes. do it. Yeah, I still do so it. At yes. What, at what point? So so obviously, if it was a human being, you can imagine a human being going to be decapitated in a yeah. slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. You could even say it's a human child or something, just yeah, yeah. It, mm -hmm. make it sort of equalize to the cow in terms of their their consciousness, mentality, intelligence. Yes. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't you wouldn't purchase that knowing that the the human was. Uh, Killed for that meat? Well, yeah, it just, it, well, I, yeah, it, it'd just be a lot more intuitive, easier for me to not buy the human because I would find that immediately viscerally more disgusting than I would if I, if I saw like minced, if I saw minced beef. But um, if it was yeah. minced human, if it was minced human, yeah, I would obviously find that like intrinsically just more disgusting. Oh, oh. partially because like I am kind of like biased by evolution, which is that I don't, I am kind of, I'm kind of evolved to see humans as being more, in as more being more morally valuable than I am a cow. Just, just as like a brute fact of my psychology. Okay. And um, so, so but yeah. all of these beings here, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of these beings here. Yeah. That are explo eggs and dairy cows also. Yes. Uh, yeah. Egg, they're all sentient beings. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you when you lump them all in together, right? Yeah. We we are all sentient. Yeah, that's true. Yes. So so basically, there's not much difference between a cow and a dog and a chicken. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. A monkey and a, we all share this. We're all having a subjective experience. In yes. Reality, mm -hmm. Yeah. Human beings, we might have a little bit more of a, you know, we can, we got voice boxes. We might have a more abstract thought patterns, things like yes, this. Mm -hmm. But if you, but but really, we are. All, what what matters is not like whether we're, we're super intelligent because we still protect humans that are not super intelligent. Yes, yeah? I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're all sentient beings. So you basically you have a clear double. You you know you have a double standard here. So I, I have sorry. a double standard. Well, I mean like. In terms of my actions, I have a double standard. In terms, but I do, I do recognize that it is, it is unjustified no matter the animal. Like I do have a kind of, like I said, I'm, I am, I do act, I am contradictory in the sense that my actions do contradict my beliefs, which I do, I do accept. Yes. Yeah, you, you accept it, but you would yeah. never. I don't think you would ever purchase a chopped up human being from the supermarket, right? Yes. And that's because of society, this and that. But you honestly have an ethical yeah. problem with that, like. I, 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 yeah, I, I have more of a problem with eating human than I do with like, eating cow. Let's just cow. say throughout, yes. throughout civilization. I, I, yeah. Let's just say throughout civilization, there's been it was been cannibalism throughout civilization. Let's yeah. just say it become a social norm. It was a social norm to yeah. humans, mm -hmm. right? But then you recognised, hey, well, I, I'm actually killing someone who's like me, yes, sentient mm -hmm. like me. Would you not wake up from that and go, wait a second, I want to participate in this social norm? I mean, wouldn't you just I, go, wait I, a I second, would... like a vegan has gone, wait yes. a second, I want to participate in this social norm? Yeah, and you would just boycott it. You go, nah, I'm not paying for that. Yes. That's horrible. But then it would be still it would be still pretty difficult though if if I were to be raised in ca in Cannibal City and I and all the meat that's available is is human every single meal I've ever eaten has involved some kind of human product. Let's just say you had to walk an extra five minutes to get the plant based food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to avoid the human food, would you do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that even that convenience wouldn't stop you from uh, avoiding humans, human flesh. Yes. Um, well, I mean, what if it well, tastes I mean, what well, if it tastes twenty well, percent better? If, if if we're talking about like if. If if I've been raised in Cannibal City my whole life, then yeah, maybe the convenience might be a little bit of an issue. But obviously, if it's but you've woken up now, if, if, you've if, woken if, up yeah. in if, Cannibal if, City. You're like, oh my god, I'm, I'm yeah. walking yes. through a murder yeah. section in the supermarket. There's yeah. murdered animals, I murdered humans everywhere. What am I yeah, doing? Yeah. Like, you're starting to freak yeah, out. Yeah, obviously, I would be, I would be a lot more like just the, the just the the kind of psychological shock of the situation would obviously make me want to walk an extra five minutes to get the chickpeas or whatever. But yeah. So why aren't you having this shock? Obviously like a cow experiences yes. their, their life and they're, they're being murdered yeah. in the same way that like a human would be. Okay. You know, there's not yeah. much difference. Like there is, it's, it's marginal. It's marginal. Like a cow doesn't want to die almost as much as a human doesn't want to die. Mm -hmm. Especially if you, you talk about a human child or something like this. Like, yeah, yeah. You, 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 like I don't see how how you're you're getting. I'm going to boycott this. I'm going to walk five minutes from from getting this human flesh to you know what? It's a bit hard to move from the mm -hmm. cow section into the plant based section in the supermarket. Yes. Because you agree in principle, but yeah. I, I just I don't think think the practical sort of pans out for you. It still seems like mm -hmm. it's only like like think about it. It's it's like a 
it's probably like a five to 10% increase in inconvenience for you. We're not talking about a lot because you live in the UK. We've got yes, like yeah. many apps and many um, ways to help. Yeah, yeah. There's vegan sections all throughout the supermarket. Yeah. You know, it's pretty easy. So you're talking about a five to 10% inc yeah. inconvenience. Yes. Well, I mean, well, I think firstly, I don't really cook for myself that often. I usually, I usually eat in halls because um, it's just convenience. Um, I'm, a, I'm a student. But like, generally, if I do see the, um, let's say I've got two options. Uh, so they've got like a kind of like vegetable stew on offer and then they have like turkey. I'm going to pick the turkey just because. Does it taste better? Cause it, it tastes better. And also like, I don't really, the vegetable stew doesn't taste that nice. To turkey, I'm, I'm more I'm gonna get able to get my macros in more easily and stuff like that. And then I might eat vegetables. Yeah. Are you concerned with macronutrients? I, 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 I am concerned about yeah, like things like protein and stuff. And okay. I do I do accept on on a protein on a vegan <laughs> diet. Sorry, ve <laughs> vegan diet is is perfectly capable of getting you perfectly capable, capable of getting like like vegan bodybuilders exist and stuff. <laughs> but like uh, it's but at the same time though, it's they do have to. You, when you go vegan, you have to like plan your diet. You have to make sure okay. you're getting you're getting things that you'd normally get from meat like B12, iodine. Um, uh, stuff, stuff like just like my, micronutrients like that, and um, and also I mean, yeah, there's yeah. some health, there's some health things. Yeah, like, 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 yeah, like, do, you, do, yeah. Do, you, do you track your nutri nutrients and protein at the moment? I do, I do sometimes, yes. Um, I like you I, did I, you some, some days. So how much I, protein I do you get a day? I use chronometers. I used to get like around um, 130 grams a day. I try to aim for. Okay. Not always successful. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. It's more than what you would need, I, I think. But I think that's I mean, a, I, I, I work out a lot, so I need. Okay, that's fine. Okay, if you work out, if you're an athlete, yeah, it's good to shoot for about that. Um, but yeah, you can get that easily on plant-based diet. So yeah. obviously not a justification anyway. You don't think these are justified anyway, but I'm just wondering why they haven't moved your needle to like, cause the taste you're talking yes. about like, okay, so vegan food, right? Yeah. When you talk about taste and you talk about like an animal to being decapitated, yeah. you're talking about like a mm. vegan food tastes good. I prefer tofu curry to chicken curry. I, I okay. agree. So there are, there is like, there will, if there is, if I go to, let's say, if I go to a restaurant, they've got a tofu curry and they've got a chicken curry. I'll pick the tofu curry. Because, okay. but both because I think it's, I, I actually prefer the taste of tofu. Than okay, wait, wait. So you, yeah. you're letting, ta are you, do you, so you're basically thinking when you're going yeah. to eat, you're thinking of your preferences. Yes. You're not thinking of morality, doesn't think like, because you haven't factored oh, yeah. morality into it. So yes. you agree with the pre vegan principle, but you haven't yeah. factored in morality to your, to your choice there. Like, like I said, it's just difficult when I've got, when you have moral principles to balance that with your kind of, firstly, your kind of more your like base desires to eat meat because meat tastes good and yeah. your desires to and you, I guess also there's a little bit of like anxiety you don't really want to be like you don't want to be the the, the vegan on the table yeah. it's a bit okay yeah, so, yeah, so, so we've got social anxiety here too I mean that, that is a factor um although social it, anxiety? Really, it really shouldn't be for me but okay so yeah. because you don't seem very anxious you sat here and talked to me <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you seem pretty confident I mean I I I saw I, 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 I saw like, <laughs> I, I I I like fit that I I do start to have a debating animal rights with me I know I know like, he was I, animal rights activist and he's like no, you seem pretty confident no 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 no, no, no. I, mean, I mean like it's just like I don't, I don't want to like conform to like the stereotype okay. of like the the, 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 the long haired like hippie vegan well uh, like, I mean you're yeah. talking to a vegan of 10 years yeah. here bro you're talking to someone who's yeah. managed and, and who was I didn't yeah. have much of an education. I left education at 14. I yeah. in prison. I had a drug addiction. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't, um, yeah, I, I didn't have, I come up, I didn't have a step up yeah. in, in, in my, you know, when I, when I first yeah. went vegan, I was definitely, um, yeah. had a step down from your average person, yes. you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I still managed to do this, man. Eh? Yeah, uh, yeah. This was uh, 10 years ago, yeah. 2013. And I didn't live in the UK where veganism was founded and where they yeah. have most of the soup fast food places who have vegan options here. Yeah. And you're talking about in a country that is like one of the easiest places on earth to be vegan by far. The only country that comes close, I think, may, might be Israel, but like the UK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we've got convenience here, it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> we should almost strike this off the list. I mean, maybe I would yeah. say that you haven't tried. I need, uh, to, I, I should probably try to like. Because if you tried, yeah. maybe yeah. you would um, realize that you didn't have to try it all that hard. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just like, it's just a matter of find like it being, well, I think firstly, if I, if I were to go vegan, I would have to probably start cooking for myself a lot more because I don't really trust my, I, I go to the most shit college in this university and they the, the canteen's usually got like one the, vegan option that's not that great for you. just recently put on uh, plant-based meals, dude. I did hear about that, yes. So yes. Well, this is convenience. Can we scroll this? Let's well, I mean, like, off. No, 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 that, 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 that hasn't been like, that, that hasn't been like. The, um, the Cambridge cafes are going full vegan soon. Uh, it hasn't been implemented cafes. yet. Yeah. Is it? But I mean, does that apply to the colleges though as well? I think. Um, the okay, you're working on good. Okay, but like, um. But you have to yeah. walk. I'm Lucy okay. Cav. L let me just let me just put okay, this into. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Okay, so yeah. I'm you. Yeah. You are the cow now. Yes, I'm the cow. Yeah. 
you were going to be decapitated. Yes. And I just used all your excuses that you just delivered to me to do yeah. it. Is, uh, what do you think of that? I obviously think it's unjustified. There's no debate about that. But yeah. It's not justice, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you agree with animal rights? Yes, I do, yes. But you oppose animal rights in your practice? Well, yeah, like I said, I, I do have men the cognitive dissonance in the sense that I do, yeah, I do affirm when I, whenever I do get the whenever I do get the, the turkey or the chicken like yeah this this is this is kind of up but yeah. at the same time does it taste good enough but, but, to... but at the same time though it's convenient and it tastes good yeah. and it's just like so yeah so basically what do you think the animals would care more about the victims here would care more about whether you say you care about animal rights or whether you actually apply that out in reality well yeah they obviously like practice only matters yeah to them because they're getting yeah. the knife in their throat when you demand yes. knives in yeah. their throat yeah I, I agree like obviously like it doesn't really matter what my intentions are yeah yeah yeah, because I could say I agree with human rights, but then I could go out and just punch people and slay people yeah. and be like, you know, but in, in principle, I agree with that, you know, like, and I could eat human burgers yeah. and be like, you know, but um, yeah. I think that you've you've raised a bunch of social, uh, yeah. cultural things that yeah. are the reasons people eat meat, actually. I don't think any yeah. of them are justified, by the way, but yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think anyone eats meat out like a genuine, like, sadism towards animals, yeah. No, but it is, yeah. yeah. I think the animals, the victim wouldn't care why you're doing it, really. Yeah. The victim just wants to be liberated and have some type of protection. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Your, your demand matters. What you do matters. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I would implore you to make maybe a okay. change. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, like I said, I am trying, although it, well, although I'm not very successful. I do think I could be, I, I could definitely be putting in you more. You are very smart. Yes. You sat here and held yeah. a very high level yeah. conversation here with yeah. me, and you definitely, you can't use, I can't do it because yes. you know how capable you are. There are people yeah. in, in situations where yeah. They would need a lot more help, and mm. some people's countries don't allow for this ease of yeah. access to food. So you're in a very, we are yeah. in a privileged position here. I, I agree that I probably could do it very easy, but just I don't want to. I mean, another thing is like, if I'm offered me, I don't want to turn it down. Like if, if I offered you a human burger, would you turn yes, it down? Yes, but that's because, like I said, it's Name just the trait. Like, what's the trait difference? What, what's the difference? I, I just have like an intuitively more like visceral reaction to that, you know. Yeah, but ethically, why would you? If you didn't have the visceral yeah. reaction, say yeah. I gave you a, a, a Xanax or something, and you didn't feel that disgust. Yeah. Would you see a moral pr issue with you accepting the human burger? I would, yes, obviously. Uh, yeah. So you would turn down the human burger? Yeah, I would, yeah. See, so, but you wouldn't turn down the cow burger. You have a problem with turning down a cow burger. I would struggle to turn down the cow burger just because it is so normalized and automatic, so accept the cow burger, yeah. yeah. But ethically, you would have no issue with uh, accepting the cow burger because you wouldn't want to make like a social ang socially anxious situation by turning yes. it down. Mm. So, so yeah. in that regard, you've trumped human emotion over animal rights. Yeah. That's unjustified. So on, the, yeah, on the, yeah, yeah obviously. It's yes. Like, it's like yeah. I, I don't want to make you feel bad, but I'm going to decapitate this animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll try and put more effort in for you then. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah. For the for, animals, for the animals. So, know, if yeah, I was a cow, I'd say yes. Yeah. For like. <laughs> oh yeah. But I know I do. It's something I, you do when no one's watching, I suppose. And yes. It's, it's up to you because what yeah. you do matters and it emanates yeah. across the world. Like, yeah. You can be a, the change you want to see, or you can just be. Yeah. Part of the problem. It's just like like a. A habit I have to get into of avoiding animal products. It's and not it's, that yeah, hard because yeah. it might seem hard right now. Yes, mm -hmm. but it's really easy because I would say you're more yeah. intelligent than me. Just yeah. holding this conversation, I can tell that you've been you got more education. You, you you know, so but I'm saying I could do it when I just got out of jail, like, yeah. f facing addiction. Like I was yeah. had no money addiction, yeah. mm -hmm. and I did it because it was the right thing All to right. do. Because I was trying yeah. to change my life around, I wanted to do better. Yes, you know what I mean. So if I can do it, yeah. so can you.